Hey, how's it going? So today we're going to be talking about On One and if you should or shouldn't switch from Lightroom. Um, On One is a paid software that does things that works like Lightroom, but you know has their own take on things. And so you know it fulfills certain needs for certain people. And so that's what we're going to kind of discuss today. I have used uh, multiple platforms for editing. I've used Raw Therapy. I've used Darktable. I've used Lightroom. I've used Lightroom Classic and On One. So the biggest reason that I switched to On One was I found that editing on multiple devices the same photo on multiple devices was a lot easier in on one compared to something like Lightroom. Um, and the way that on one does this is they have sidecar files that, you know, just sit beside your files, your photos, and they contain all the edit information instead of being in something like your catalog with Lightroom classic. My workflow basically entails that I upload all my photos to my NAS and on my NAS, you know, I will edit from there. Um, and so, you know, whether I'm sitting at my desk, you know, using my PC, or you sitting on the couch editing off my laptop. On one simplifies the process for me um, and just not having to import a catalog and move it over and that kind of thing. Um, as well as that is possible, I believe, in Lightroom. Um, but the only problem with Lightroom is that I didn't like the filtering and sorting um, as much as Lightroom Classic. Um, but then also, you know, I'm probably running into the same issues I am with On One, but I have found ways around it that work for me. On one, you buy it once and you own it for life. So, and then if you ever want an upgrade, uh, you just basically buy an upgrade. Um, so the flat fee is, or the initial purchase is about 100, 120 bucks. I can't remember now. Um, but basically with the sales that they have, you can get the updates for around $70. Again, this is all Canadian. Hey, editor me. As I was getting the screenshots for the update, I did realize that their upgrade price went up. I don't know if it's a different sale or whatnot, but it's um, definitely a bit more expensive than $70. But you can see here that I did pay $70 for my upgrade, and this isn't the first time that I know I've paid $70. Compared to Adobe's photography plan, which I believe was $15 a month, even if I buy every update from On One, you know, I'm still basically saving half my money that I would have spent if I stayed with the Lightroom subscription. I also do like the fact that it is a purchase and then I find it a bit more manageable to, you know, save up the $70, purchase it and be done with it. And then that way when I, you know, don't want if, you know, I don't want to upgrade, I don't have to and I can keep using the software that I purchased. So we'll just give a quick rundown of on one and, you know, kind of my workflow. Um, so into a folder, I've created a catalog folder within on one, which will basically let you scan every single file. It will actually auto keyword every image with their uh, keyword AI and um it just makes it uh filtering and quickly looking at images just a little bit faster everything's cached and all that um so you can see the catalog progress in the bottom here everything's up to date so that's great um and you can see all my folders so these are all the folders i've taken or all the pictures i've taken in 2024 um you'll see all your images here and the biggest reason why i bought why i originally went with on one was their no noise ai I'm a wildlife photographer, and so that means shooting in low light and having to crank up my ISO is part of the gig. Uh, Lightroom does have a denoising tool built in now, um, but back when On One 2023 came out, which was the first On One I bought, they had it, I believe, first before Lightroom, and so that was kind of why I switched, or why I started with On One. You know, you can pixel peep all you want and say, oh, this denoising is better than this one, or Topaz is the best, or whatever. I find, you know, you can't really tell with any of them. It depends on a per image basis. And I find that, you know, the one that comes with on one, they're still updating it. It's still getting better. It works plenty good for me. So here we can, we'll just take a look at an image. So here I have this fox that uh, came out late at night. You know, you can see it at 914. Um, and it was only lit by a floodlight nearby. Um, let's pick a bit of a sharper image. There you go. So you can see my ISO is 2000 or 25,600. So if we go to under no noise and sharpening here in the develop tab um, and we let the no noise run, it does run locally, which also is kind of nice as, um, especially for the generative AI with Adobe, it doesn't run locally. So if we go into the edit tab and go to noise and sharpening and click no noise AI, um, you can see we've got sliders here, but it's just on auto right now. And if we just go to this left eye here and we kind of just go back and forth, you can see it gets rid of the noise really well um, and sharpens it up in a bit. We do have the tack sharp AI as well, um, or we could do both no noise AI and tack sharp AI. Um, I find that, you know, especially in this case where, you know, I had no choice to crank my eyes. So I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second, like with the big 500 F4, it's a heavy lens. There's a little bit of IS in it, but you know, that's not going to save you. Um, 
in this situation. So cranking the ISO was really my only option at this point. I probably should have cranked it a little bit more, but um, you know, I'm so happy with this image and was able to get some good shots with it. But I find that the no noise AI works great. And back before I had Lightroom or any uh, denoising software, this was a huge game changer for me. So another, you know, kind of cool feature that I've maybe used once or twice just kind of for fun is they have a sky swap AI. Um, so what you can do is you just take an image. So we'll just take this image of a bald eagle, open it up. And in the sky tab, what it'll do is it'll detect the sky in the image. And then we can replace the sky with whatever we want. So we'll just go something, you know, really dramatic, you know. Honestly, that looks pretty good. I didn't think it would look that good, um, that realistic. Obviously, you can see in the trees here, it's, it hasn't picked up the sky there. And, you know, the branches are a little wonky, but um, it does do a pretty good job in simpler cases. Another thing that I do appreciate with On One is the focus stacking is built into the program. We just take a few images here and we right click this group and we can go to create focus stack. And this will let On One automatically stack the images for us. I'm sure there's better software out there, but this does a great job and you know, you can tweak it and all that. You can do the same thing with HDR and just it all being integrated into the app is really good. It also saves it as a dot on one photo, um, which basically means it just stores all the data that it needs to restock it when it comes, uh, when you want to look at it again. So it's not like you would have to restock it if you want to make changes at a later date. So another great feature that was added actually in 2024 was their brilliance ai and its ability to bulk edit images so i can just select you know these five images or six images let's say and turn on brilliance ai and then you know i can just hit apply and we'd be good to go um but you know i can auto apply denoising i can change some options here just to you know if i needed if i came home from a shoot and i just wanted to get photos out quickly i could easily do that I now want to talk about what Lightroom does better than on one because, you know, there's no way that one software can be completely better in all areas versus another. The camera and lens support is definitely better in Lightroom. Um, here, I only have correction profiles for some lenses and not others. Um, you know, I can choose different versions of that lens, but not the version that I have. The sorting is better in Lightroom. So if we go to our catalog here within on one, um, you know, I what I do is I create a calendar every year and Throughout the year, I will mark pictures that I want to include in my calendar, or that might be I want to include in my calendar. I label those with the purple tag. So you can see here that I select the attribute for the filters and then the purple um, labeled photos. Nothing shows up. You have to change it to search your catalog folder. So for mine, it's 2024. And then here you, go, you can see all the images that you know I've tagged as purple. I wish it was a bit smarter to just know that I'm in you know, I'm looking at my catalog folder, I want to search everything. I find, you know, always search and all that kind of stuff. It doesn't really stick, the settings don't stick. So it doesn't, you know, stay there. But, you know, look, it's, it's not that big of a deal. The problem w that I find with on one, especially if they were on my NAS is the sorting does take or the filtering rather does take a lot longer. Um, whereas with Lightroom Classic, you have the catalog, the catalog is stored locally. And that will get you everything right in front of you right away. And then when you want to go and edit those photos, then you can go and pull from your server. Um, so the way I get around that is I just have a dedicated drive that's duplicated between my NAS and locally. I edit off of it and then I sync it up with my server. Um, and then that way I kind of circumvent that problem. But, you know, it would have been it would have been nicer if, you know, it was just a bit quicker. But there's obviously, again, that's my problem, not. Lightrooms. Um, I just need a faster server with faster desks. The app stability with Lightroom, and I can't believe I'm saying this, is better. Um, on one, it, it's not that it, has, it crashes a lot. The problem is when you're reading from slow media, it will get thing up there and then, you know, kind of say not responding. Um, as well as handling big amounts of data, you know, it can chug along in the beginning. The catalog folders do help with this. So, you know, it, the catalog folders is the same your catalog and Lightroom. So I guess it kind of depends on how you think of it um, and what's a fair playing ground for both programs. But I find that I experienced a lot less crashes or I experienced a lot less crashes in Lightroom. The geotagging was a nice feature um, within Lightroom. So you could just open up the maps and you know, you'd be able to tag where your photos were taken. 
I have a Garmin watch that has a GPS in it. So if I would go on a hike, I could start a walking activity, download the data after it, and then sync it up with the timestamps automatically. And it was, you know, kind of cool to see. I, I didn't do it for too long before I switched back to On1. Um, On1 does keep in the metadata. So if we look in the information here, um, you know, it does keep track of the GPS and you can have your location and all that. Um, but it's not like a physical map. So it's a little less interesting and it's nothing, nothing that you, I personally need, but I could, you know, certainly see some people wanting to use a physical or actual map. So on one does have presets, obviously, you know, I don't think any editing software could be complete without them. And, you know, these are just some basic ones that come with the app, no different than Lightroom. Um, nothing special. Um, but the one thing that is a little frustrating is with on one, you can't import Lightroom presets and obviously you can't go the other way, but with Lightroom presets, you can open up the file and see what the edits are. So that way, if you wanted to open them in any other editing software, you can, you know, you could just do it manually copying them over. Um, so, and also, you know, a lot of creators create Lightroom presets, not on one presets. So the presets do lack a little bit because there's just no community behind them. Um, but it would be nice if on one were to create a tool that would let you import Lightroom presets. Um, you know, obviously their algorithms and how they apply certain settings like exposure and all that are a little bit different, um, you know, computationally, but I'm sure that would get the user into a good starting point and then they can make their changes, um, as they see fit. Uh, one other, you know, positive for Lightroom is the fact that they have obviously a lot of advancements and a lot of investment into generative AI and they've been doing it for a lot longer. Um, so, you know, the generative AI in Photoshop if you're getting the photography package from Adobe, you know, you get Photoshop. So the generative AI within Photoshop is absolutely the best of class leading. In On1 2025, they have announced that they're going to have a similar feature to Lightroom's generative or generative AI remove, or I guess just AI remove, um, which will let you, you know, circle a little person in the background and remove it. I'm not going to say which one's better just yet because On1 hasn't really released it yet. Um, and I haven't played with the Lightroom version of it. So, you know, you can't judge what you can't, you don't have in front of you. Now let's talk about the reasons why I switched on. So the biggest thing for me was the price, obviously, uh, 70 bucks a month or a year, essentially gets, you know, my money goes a lot farther per year than with Adobe at $15 a year. Yeah, I was getting cloud storage, but I never used it. Yeah, I was getting Photoshop again, never used it. Um, I may consider buying Affinity Photo um, just to have a Photoshop alternative. But for right now, you know, 70 bucks one time per year if I want the updates too, and I'm happy. The editing on two machines is also a big deal for me because if I'm, you know, away from my, if I'm not home, I'm editing on my laptop. I just want to be able to copy all my folders over to my server and pick up where I left off with on my PC. That is possible in Lightroom. I do know that. It's just when you're, you got to import the catalog and it was just, it didn't work with me. And so I just didn't want to deal with it. So I would always wait till I got home, uploaded my files to my server and then I could go from there. The auto AI tagging is a very nice feature. So if we go into here, you know, you can see that it tagged, you know, with everything that it sees. And if I can even search by that. So if I go to the text prompt here and I go search the folder that I want to search, and I want to see all the pictures I've taken of birds. So I'm searching every image that contains a bird. You can see a lot of these have birds in them. So it's pretty accurate. Um, if I go dog, you'll see a lot of pictures of my dog it works pretty well and you know it's a nice feature to have so if i'm like hey where's that picture of whatever um you know this can help me find it a bit quicker um you know if i want to see what lunar eclipse images i have or anything like that um you know i'm sure it's misidentifying the moon here but it works good enough for the solar eclipse here um but i just recently took a picture of the lunar eclipse um and you can see that here. so that is a nice to have feature but not really a reason to switch, uh, just a nice to have. So I hope this kind of gave you, you know, an overview of what On1 is capable of. Obviously there's, you know, I didn't show you how to add in a photo in On1, but it's the same as Lightroom. Uh, you know, any feature that Lightroom has, there's a way to do it in On1. Um, it has masking and, you know, it's mask, um, auto masking is really good as well. You can kind of just hover over an image. So their auto masking features are very well. They have the super select and lets you, it'll analyze the image and then, pick out, you know, what you're trying to select here. It's not perfect, obviously, but, you know, it gets the job done. Um, you know, if I want to select this bird here, and then I can create, just create an adjustment layer, um, and then I can edit just this bird. It works really well. They have a depth mask analyzer coming in the 2025 version. 
So that'll be really interesting to test as well. Um, you know, that way I could say, hey, just edit this focal plane. Um, and they're, they're showing that on their YouTube channel. So you, you can go check that if you want um, and kind of see what features they offer. Um, but if you guys have any questions, just leave them down below. And I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.